Hello, everyone. Welcome to APH Virtual Excel Camp. This week is STEM Camp, Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics Camp, built for our 11 to 13 year olds, but everybody is welcome. Get in, get comfortable. Realize we will use the chat quite a bit, and you do have permission at times to speak and put your camera on, but only those campers who have had their parents send in their photo release will be able to have their cameras on. Again, if you want to, we have a whole week to go. So if yours isn't turned in yet, there's always tomorrow. So welcome, welcome, glad you're joining us. As you get comfortable, today is APH Virtual STEM Camp for 11 to 13 year olds. And your instructors today are Mary Kate and Kathy. Before we get going, really quick, I wanted to share some people who have already shared their information with us. Kenji sent us a photo to tell us he was ready to go. He's got his STEM circuits kit out things on the board and the instruction book open. And Nadia is ready to go. She also has her kit out ready with materials already built on the board. So I am so excited to see what else you all create. And with that, I am turning it over to Mary Kate and Kathy. Welcome everybody. We are so excited to be here with you this week for our STEM Camp Academy. And we will be focusing our learning on electricity and circuits. I would like to just take a minute right now and have you guys open up the chat and let me know if you received a SNAP circuit kit. If you have your kit, you can press Y in the chat. And if you don't have a kit, you can type in N. Already I'm seeing answers flooding in. So many yes, so many yes. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for all of the adventures and the learning that we will have this week. If you have already cracked open your SNAP Circuits kit, Maybe let me know in the chat. That would be fantastic. If you haven't, then you have an extreme amount of willpower because I don't think that I could have this snap circuit kit at my house and not open it until day one. We have a few expectations for our camp today. We want to make sure that we're being very respectful. So we want to make sure that the comments that we're putting in the chat are on topic. Make sure that they're related to what we are talking about. There will be a time when we will be able to turn cameras on. And when we get to turn our cameras on, we're hoping that we can all be active participants. We definitely will need them for a game that we are playing later on today. And then we want to make sure that we are following the safety rules for our SNAP circuits. So we will make sure that we include these rules every day at the end of our extension activity this week. But I'm going to go over them briefly right now. We want to make sure that we are using eye protection when we're experimenting on our own. We want to make sure that at least one component that will limit the current through a circuit, such as the speaker, a lamp, the whistle chip, um, and ICs, which must be connected properly, the motor, the photoresistor, or the resistor. We need to have one of the co those components in place. We want to always use the LED and switches in conjunction with other components that will limit the current through them. Failure to do this will create a short circuit, uh-oh, and that will damage our parts. And if you don't know what a short circuit is, hang on tight with us, we will explain that. We want to always disconnect our batteries immediately and check our wiring if something gets hot. That means there's something wrong with our circuit. We want to always connect our ICs using configurations given in the projects or 
or the way that the connection descriptions are listed for the parts. Never connect your snap circuits to an electrical outlet in your house. This will cause danger and probably melt your snap circuit kit. And never leave a circuit unattended when we have turned it on and never touch the motor when it is spinning at high speed because that could hurt us and create an injury right there and then i'm going to add a couple extra rules we are going to keep our hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times hang on tight and enjoy this snap circuit ride i'm going to turn the time over to mary Kay right now for introductions Hello campers. My name is Mary Kate and I am a TVI in Virginia. Um, and I hope all of you are going to enjoy this week. Um, one important thing that I want to let you know about me is that like many of you, I have a visual impairment. So when I'm demonstrating building with the snap circuits, I'm doing it in an accessible way, or at least I'm trying to. Um, and I will be kind of throwing in there some of my little tips for accommodating um, building with a visual impairment. Um, but our first fun thing we're going to do with introductions today is because this week we are all going to be scientists, we're all going to come up with our mad scientist names. So, and if you want to, um, you can have a minute to think about what your mad scientist name is. And I want you to write in the chat what your who you are and where you're from and what your mad scientist name is. My mad scientist name is going to be Dr. Short Circuit, which I know as Kathy just said, is something that you don't wanna do when you're making circuits. Um, but so I'm gonna turn it back over to Kathy. Kathy, what is your mad scientist name? My mad scientist name is Dr batteries not included. And I'm going to take a moment real quick and I'm going to change that on my Zoom picture. And I am going to do the same while giving you guys a chance to write yours, your name, your magic names in the chat. Already I see a couple names coming through. We have Jimmy Neutron. I love it. We have Dr. Frostbark. How fun. And then we have the Dr. Circuit Breakers from the California School for the Blind. Welcome, welcome. I'm also seeing Dr. Mason. <gasps> Oh my goodness, and Dr. Strange has joined us. Oh, Ooh. I feel so honored that we have Dr. Strange here. And I'm sure that we can learn so many things from Dr. Strange about how to be a good scientist. And while you guys are typing your names in the chat, I'm just going to review some of the things that make a good scientist. We need to follow the directions to be good scientists. Good scientists are curious. We need to constantly be asking questions. How does this work? Why does this work the way that it does? What if I do this? We're going to raise our digital hand if we want to speak. You can, if our cameras are on, you can raise your hand in the camera, in front of the camera, or you can use the digital hand in Zoom. We want to make sure, good scientists, we do not eat or drink around our snap circuit kits or our snap circuit parts. We are never going to touch those moving parts. We are going to be respectful of others and a good scientist always knows their objective. So I wonder if any of you are curious about what our objective could possibly be for today. Well, hold on. 
our objective is we are going to define electricity and electric current and then we are going to get so familiar with our snap circuit kit that we will be able to know what that grid is know how it is set up know how to locate the pieces in our kit and get started building awesome mary kate are you seeing any names in the chat that you love or are you ready to Let's jump see. into electricity i see super circuit um Professor Bob, I see Dr. Power on, I see Lady Zap. I love it. There are so many creative names for our scientists in the chat. Yes. So let's get started. So are we up for next thing? Electricity? Yes. Okay. So when we're building those snap circuits this week and building those electronics, we're going to be using electricity. And I want you to tell me in the chat, how many of you, oh wait, let me see. So we're going to look at what is electricity. So I want you to think about, everyone kind of uses electricity for a lot of things around your house. So tell me what would happen if you didn't have electricity? What's one thing you wouldn't be able to do without electricity? Write in the chat and let us know. What's something you wouldn't be able to do without electricity? I'm seeing a lot of people saying, I wouldn't be able to turn my lights on. Correct. Yeah. Some people say we wouldn't be able to have heat in our house. We wouldn't be able to cook. We wouldn't be able to charge our iPhones. Dum, oh, dum, dum. That's that a was big awful. One. We have I video see. games. Yeah. Ooh, some people would not be able to stay cool on a hot day. There are so many things here, Dr. Short Circuit, that are very important to my life that I need electricity for. So what makes all this electricity work? What makes the electricity go and why do we need it? So we're gonna look this week at, we're gonna make electric circuits. And a circuit is the path that the electricity takes to get from one place to another and through all your devices and your wires and to get to where it needs to go to power everything. And that's what we're gonna play with this week. So now Dr. Batteries is going to go over some vocabulary. All right, the first thing I wanna do though is talk about one thing that I thought I would not be able to do. And my little brother probably would have been really happy if I wouldn't have been able to do this. Ooh. I would drag my feet as I walked across the carpet and I would walk up to my brother and I would touch him on his arm and there would be a zap. Let me know in the chat if you have ever done that Ooh. or maybe another thing is if you've ever taken a balloon and you've rubbed it against the hair on your head and then put that balloon up against the wall and the balloon stays there that is also an illustration of electricity and i love how we have so many answers in the chat that people know that this is static electricity I love it. So what that is, is electricity is energy. And it's a type of energy that uses charged particles like electrons and protons. So we're gonna be going into that a little bit later. If you have a different definition for electricity, I would sure like to know, throw that in the chat. So we have electricity is the energy, then we also have something called an electric current. An electric current is the movement of electricity from one place 
to the other. Electricity likes to move. Our next vocabulary term, oh, and I love that in the chat, Owen is telling us that lightning is electricity and you are absolutely right. And I also love the definition for electric current that calls it a stream of those charged particles. Thank you so much. Our next vocabulary word is a circuit. I wanna hear what you guys have to say about circuit. Have you heard of a circuit before? Do you know what a circuit is? And while you're thinking about that, we have a fantastic answer that says electricity is a form of energy that requires circuits, conductors, and insulators in order for it to work and be active. Nice. I see some people already know what a circuit is. Some people say it goes around and around. Some people say that it's something to go through. Ian has an excellent answer right there. Ian says a circuit is the path of which electricity travels. That is fantastic. And if that path isn't connected, that path doesn't work. What do you yeah. think, Dr. Short Circuit? I like that definition of a path because we can think about the path going all the way around and the electricity goes on goes when it goes through one of like a light or your stove that's one of the stops on the path that the electricity has to go through i love it we have such great participants today our next vocabulary word is a resistor Oh my goodness, wonder what a resistor could do if I break that word down into its parts. I hear resist at its base. And if I'm resisting something, it means I don't wanna do it. I'm party hard against it. Yes, resists electrical energy. This is fantastic. So a resistor is something that slows the flow of electricity. It's like, wait a minute, slow down here, electric current. You're going too fast. I love it. And we are going to get into resistors on Thursday to find out exactly how they work. You can our, uh, go ahead, is, Dr. Short Circuit. This is Dr. Short Circuit. You can think if we're talking about the electricity, the electric, the electric circuit being a path. You can think of a resistor of being a speed limit. Mm, I love that. A resistor is the speed limit that says, Tells hey, slow down. down. Lead foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Our next vocabulary word is an electron. I wonder how many of us have heard of an electron or a proton. Hmm, what are they? Owen has heard. I think they're pretty small, right? I love it. Miles has already jumped ahead and he knows that electrons and protons are opposite. One of them has a negative charge and one of them has a positive charge. These are particles with charges. I wanna know in the chat, let me know, do you think a proton has a positive charge or a negative charge? Yes, proton has a positive charge. And the easy way to remember that is proton and positive both start with the letter P. So I think we've got a pretty good handle on our vocabulary. I'm just gonna go ahead and type these vocabulary words in the chat so that we can remember what they are. We have electricity, electric current, circuit, resistor, electron, and proton. That is our basic vocabulary for electricity. Dr. Short Circuit, I think it's time to talk about our snap circuits. Oh, okay. So 
our snap circuits kit. Let's see, can we I'm gonna turn over to see if we can show if, if you know how to pin and you can pin my workspace, it says Mary Kate's workspace, then you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna scoot over. You won't be able to see my face, but you can see my workspace. So we have our snap circuits kit. It has a lot of parts in it. And there are, I'm just gonna go over real quick the different parts. We have a speaker. We have snap wires. And let me see if I can get a snap wire. These snap wires, they are anywhere from one to three snap, one to six snaps. And these are what, these are your wires that connect all your other parts. Dr. Short Circuit, I have a question. Yes. Wires that I know wiggle and move and could even twirl around my hand like the wires for my headphones. That doesn't look like a wire. Can you tell me what it looks like or feels like? Well, so these are flat um, pieces and they're rigid. They are, they do not bend and it makes it easier to connect things. We also have regular wires like you'd think of. We have two jumper wires that can also be used and snap in, but the snap wires just make it easier to build um, with the snap circuits. So, and the snap wires are used to connect parts. We have resistors. We have some switches. We have two different types of switches. We have our motor. We have a lamp. And we have some LED, we have an LED light. We have some different switches. And then we have, these are the fun, these are integrated circuits or ICs and they are little circuits all um, already made inside this little box. And we have one that makes music, one that makes um, a siren or an alarm sound. And then there's one called Space Wars that makes all sorts of different, um, all sorts of different um, sounds, depending on what you do with it. So those are some of the parts that you have in your kit. And now Dr. Battery's not included. What's our first game? I would love to play a game that my friend Robin taught me, and it is called The Quest. So um, if you would like to have your camera turned on, go and you've turned in your permission slip, go ahead and raise your hand and Leanne will turn your camera on for you. If you don't have a camera on, don't worry, we can still play this game. So while we're thinking about that, I want to just jump in and say a quest is like a special mission or a special job. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to call out the name of a snap circuit piece from our kit. And we want to find that piece and hold it up to our camera. Don't worry if you can't turn your camera on because you can still use the chat and you can type in, what should we put? Um, a G for got it. How does that sound, everybody? Nice. I can see some cameras on. I'm so excited to see beautiful smiling faces. Nadia, it's really nice to see you in person. All right. Give me a thumbs up either in your camera or digitally if you are ready to start. I love it. All You're right. You're still going to see a few more pictures as I keep catching them. Oh, I love it. I can't wait. Oh, I see Miley too. Love it. All right. The first thing I want you to find is I want you to find the battery holder.
And mine is a little hard to see. So I'm going to see what happens if I take this big. You, nice. I am seeing battery holders. Excellent. The battery holder is a very important piece for our snap circuits because batteries is what is holding all of the energy that we're going to be using. So now as we play the quest, I want to bring up a very important point. When I am finished with my piece, I'm going to make sure that I put it right back into the box where I found it. And the reason that I want to do that is it's so much easier to build if I can find my pieces. So if I don't put my battery pack where it's supposed to go in my set, next time I want to build, I'm going to be hunting for my battery pack. Yes, I love all my friends in the chat that have shown me that they have got that battery pack too. Awesome. Now I want to see if you guys can find a three snap wire. My three snap wires has three snaps on the top. Awesome. I can see one right there in the camera. Ian, Oliver. Oh, even you're still there and got it. <laughs> there is my three snap wire. I think we have some friends in the chat that have found it too. So the three snap wire is a mid range wire and it will cover three um, snaps on our grid. I love it. And I think Dr. Short Circuit put her snap on her grid. Yep. That's cool. All right. Yes, we are going to put that one back where we found it. And I want us to find the speaker. Where is the speaker in my snap circuit kit? Oh, I see people. We've got it. We've got it. Yes. Well done. Our speaker has a base that is probably the same size as a three snap. And it is round on the top. Excellent. And my speaker lives in the top right hand corner of my box. All right, let's see what else we can find. I am looking on a quest going, going, going. I am looking for the motor. Show me that motor. Woohoo! Way to go. And if we feel it, since it's not connected, we can really feel how this feels. It's a three snap. So it would cover three spots on our on our breadboard. And then it has like a cylinder that rises up. And then it has that little part with like three little prongs on it. And if you haven't looked at it, why don't you grab the fan while we have the motor and see if you can connect your fan on top of your motor. On the bottom of our fan in the center, there are three grooves and those grooves need to go over the prongs. Whoops, I just dropped it on the top of our motor. And that is how it goes. Nice job, Miley, Nadia, Kenji. You guys, this is looking great. Maya's got it too, well done. So now we have two pieces that we have to put back in our box where we found them. All right, our next one, I want you to choose any one of the one C's. So you can choose the alarm one C, the music one C, or the space war one C. And show me, and I will be excited. If you are chiming in the chat, if you got the space war, type an S. If you got the alarm, type an A. And if you got the music, type an M. I can see Nadia. It looks like she and I are twinners. She got the space war. 
And if this is done in short circuit, they're labeled in Braille and they're labeled one, the, the, um, the music one is labeled U1, the space war, no, the alarm is U2 and the um, space wars is U3. Thank you so much, Dr. Short Circuit, for pointing that out. And I know visually I can see those number, those letters and numbers on it. Um, and I'd love and also, that they build that for us. And also the colors, the music one is blue, the alarm one is red, and the space wars is green. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Short Circuit. I love it. Looks like Andrew found the music one and so did Daniel. All right. I don't want to keep us too long from building, but I really would like to do a couple more pieces. The first one I want you to get is a jumper wire. You can choose either the red jumper wire or the black jumper wire. And this wire is going to feel more similar to like um, wires for your headphones. It's very thin and it's very flexible. However, the ends have these fantastic snaps on them that make it very easy to connect. So why do you think we have some snap wires that are rigid and we have two snap wires that are wires and flexible? Why do you think we would need that? Ooh, I see a hand up. Kenji has his hand up. Leanne, could he unmute and talk to us? He should be able to. Nice. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Kenji. Hello. Um, I think it's because they conduct electricity in different ways. Ah, that's a very interesting one. So how do you think they conduct it differently? I don't know. I think that like for the rigid ones, they like go straight. But for the other ones, if they have to like to slow them down or speed them up, they can like use the extra curves and twists. Oh my goodness, I am loving this prediction. Ian has his hand up. Ian, if you would like to unmute and tell us what are your thoughts? Why do you think some of our snap circuits are rigid and some of them are flexible? Because the ones that are like, the ones that are flexible, they almost act like copper wire, which actually like, which is able to, send electricity to different places without you getting hurt while the metal ones they just send they just go through like the what's it called the yellow ones those just go through those while the jumper wires just take go from the like the electrical outlet to where you want it to get where you want electricity I love these predictions and I am so excited for us to build projects with our snap circuits and get hands on with these jumper wires and with like our one snap, our two snap, our three snaps, the more rigid ones. And we can experience why we think. I'm gonna remember those predictions and I'm not gonna tell you right now why I think oh. they're that way. All right, thank you guys so much for playing the quest with this. Oh, Miley, did you have one more? Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I did. Um, whenever you have the little, the thing, like if you run out of the long ones, you could connect this to one of the, working circuits. So are you suggesting that if I run out of the rigid snap yeah. wires, then I could use um, a jumper wire, right? Yeah. I like it. These are great predictions. All right. Well, Dr. Short Circuit, I think we're pretty familiar. I want you guys to let me know, raise your hand if you're feeling pretty familiar with what's in your snap circuit kit. And if you would like to jump in to snap circuits with Dr. Short Circuit. 
Oh my goodness. I see some super oh, yes. excited participants. All right, Dr. Short Circuit, take it away. Okay, campers. So the first thing we have to do is the one item we didn't go over in the Snap Circuit Kit is this item that I have up here. It's your grid. It is called the breadboard. And it is a grid. Uh, it is labeled with from A to G going down the left side. So we have rows A through G. And then we have columns running across the top from one to 10. And when we're placing our parts for our snap circuits, we will be given a coordinate on our grid where we place our pieces. Hey, Dr. Short Circuit, I have a question real quick. Yes. I need to know, do um, which one goes horizontally or oh. left to right? Is that a row or is that a column? Do any of our mad scientists happen to know that? You can type it in the chat. If you think the ones that go left to right are rows, type an R. If you think they are columns, type a C. I'm seeing a lot of R's coming in and that is correct. So our rows go horizontally left to right and they are labeled with letters. So that would mean columns go up and down and they are labeled with numbers. Thanks for letting me jump in there, Dr. Short Circuit. Thank you. So we're gonna practice real quick with our grid to practice placing parts so that we get the idea. So I have a switch here, one of our switches, our S1 switch. And we're just gonna use this to practice placing some parts. So if you guys wanna get out your switch, your S1 switch and practice with me, if, I, if our directions say that we're gonna place our switch from C2, no, it's from C2 to C5, what we need to do is we need to count down on our, in our, um, on our rows, we have row A, row B, row C, and then we count over one, two, three. Did I say C3? So we're gonna place- I thought you said C2. I did. Okay, I can't remember. <laughs> See, my brain has short-circuited already. <laughs> so if we're placing from C2 to C4, we're gonna, we know that our first snap goes on C2 but where does our second snap go? Is it gonna, it's gonna go vertically, horizontally from C2 to C4 because both of our coordinates have C in them. So we know that it's gonna be horizontally. Oh, I see Nadia is holding hers up. It looks like she did a great job from yes. what I can tell. Good job, Nadia. Kenji's holding his up. This is great. I love it. So the left side of my switch is snapped on to C2 and the right side of my switch is snapped on to C4. Okay, so we're gonna place another, another thing now. I'm gonna place, let's see, we're gonna, place the resistor and I chose this one just because it's bright and you can see it. So let's see, if we place the resistor, we're told to place the resistor from D5 to F5. First, I want you to think, do you think that's gonna go horizontally or do you think that's gonna go vertically? Write in the chat, V for vertical or H for horizontal. It's going from D5 to F5. Mm. What do you think? 
so far I'm seeing two answers of horizontal, but then I see now I see an answer with vertical and another answer with vertical. We are tied. Okay, so let's see. So if we have, so we're gonna start, we're gonna find D5. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna go A, B, C, D, and then we're gonna count over for our columns at one, two, three, four, five. So we know we start here. Now we're gonna place it and we know that, okay, so if we're at D, E, F, will be down. F. So it is going to be vertical. If our letters change, but our numbers don't, it's going to be vertical. If our numbers change, but our letters don't, it's going to be horizontal. I love that tip, Dr. Short Circuit. Yes. That is a really helpful way. Kenji, you have your hand up. Would you like to unmute and ask a question? Sure, it's not really about the um, thing. It's just, is this the resistor? Because I couldn't really find it. Yeah. Oh, that actually is um, the whistle. whistle. Clip. My resistor was is this one. Is it this? Is it this? Yes. Okay. Yep. I believe it's labeled with an R1 in Braille. Yes. Okay. The piece itself is bright yellow with a red zigzag on it. Okay. And in your kit, it is right next to it is right to the right of the lamp. Mm -hmm. So you can nice. find it that way too. Okay. Who is ready to start building our first circuit? Oh, I see a very enthusiastic wave from Kenji. I love awesome. it. Ian has a big grin on his face. I think we're Taylor ready. is raising her hand or his hand in the attendance. Okay, so one thing to know with your snap circuits kit, so you have the instructions for all these things we're gonna build in many different ways. You, in your snap circuit kit, there was the print, the regular print guide, which has everything very visually. You have a large print accessible book that has everything written out. You have the braille copy of that accessible book. And if you go to the APH website, you can find the electronic file for it in both a BRF and a PDF, so that in a text file, so that you can read it on your iPad or refreshable Braille, Braille display or however you want to read it. I have mine on my iPad, so I can zoom in and make it as big as I need to. So the first thing we do when we're building is we need to get out our parts. And for this build, for this project, we're doing project one, which is on page three of the, of the large print book. We are going to need the battery. We're going to need the S1 switch. It's the green, well, both switches are green, so. But it's the one, the S1 switch is the one that you can turn on and off. The S1 switch is like a sliding switch. Yes. And then we have the lamp. Then it's labeled with an L1. And then we need four two snaps. And our two snaps are stuck together, so I'm going to switch. Be, could the switch be a button? That That is another switch. There are two switches in our kit. We have the slide switch, which is S1. And then we have the button switch, which is S2. And we'll go really in depth into both of them. Does it really matter which day? Um, for this one, get the sliding switch. Okay. Okay. 
And then the last thing we need is a three snap wire. And okay. And then Mary Kate, we had a great question in the chat. Do you happen to know what page this prog pro project is on in our Braille book? So the Braille book, I believe it's page five. The Braille book has reference page number set up. So it's the same as you can see the same as the print pages. So, but it thank is, you so much. The Braille book has the print reference page numbers also, and they're located in the upper right hand corner of each page. Okay, does everybody have their parts out? I think we probably are good. Okay. Oh. You have Where one you hand feel? raised from Zhang. Okay. Zhang, would you like to um, answer your question? Well, I have a question. Can you hold up the lamp again? I forgot what it looked like. The lamp, it's three snaps long and it's clear and it has a cylinder on the top. It looks like it has kind of a um, feels like it has a cylinder on top that sticks. And then the top of this cylinder is smooth. It's um, smooth. There's another one that's similar with, uh, with a cylinder on the top, but it has a hole in the middle. So you want to find the one that's smooth. In okay, my it, kit, it. it's yeah. just to the right of the motor. Yes. Okay. You've got two more questions. One is can you tell me where to find the battery? And the other is, what is the project called? The project is called Project One Electric Light and Switch. And then in my kit, the battery pack is kind of in the bottom right hand corner. In the very bottom right hand corner, I have two three snap wires and the battery pack is just to the left of that. And then your snap circuit kit did not come with batteries. So you would need two double A batteries right now. All right. And I think we're good. I do have someone that said that their snap circuit kit has not arrived. So uh, we will be posting a video where I will do a project that you don't have to have snap circuits for, but it illustrates the same concept. We won't have time to do it today during class, but I will post that video and um, send that to Leanne. Okay, so let's start building. So when we build, we build in layers. So our first layer, the first thing we're gonna place is the battery from C6 to E6. So I have my battery and I know it's gonna go vertically because the, it has the same number, but different letters. So I'm gonna count down to find my C6. A, B, C, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna make sure it snaps in. And then I had to make sure because our battery pack is kind of a square. The snaps are on the left-hand side, as I put it, and the two batteries are on the right-hand side. Because if, um, if I had it turned around the other way, then it wouldn't be oriented correctly. So we need to make sure the snaps are connected to C6 and E6 on the left-hand side of our box. Thank you, Dr. Batteries. Okay, next we're gonna place the S1 switch from E3 to E5. So I know this is gonna be vertical. I mean, this is gonna be horizontal because the E's are the same, but the numbers change. So we're gonna count down A, B, C, D, E. Let me count that again. A, 
B, C, D, E, and then one, two, three. And I'm gonna place that there. And I wanna make sure, you wanna make sure when you place your switch that you turn it to the off position. You have on written in the word on written in braille. You wanna make sure when you place your switch that it is turned off. So away from the on. That way when we, when we connect everything, things don't start running until we want them to. The last piece in our first layer is going to be the three snap from C2 to E2. And I know that that is going to be vertical because the letters change, but the numbers stay the same. So I'm gonna count on A, B, C, and one, two. I'm going to start at some, I found C2 to E2. Okay. And then, oh, you know what? I forgot to place our lamp. I skipped the step. I have to go back. I forgot to place our lamp from C3 to C5. A, B, C, one, two, three. And that's going to go horizontally. So we, right now we have our first layer. And these are not connected yet. So our second layer, we're going to take our snaps and we are going to connect our pieces. So our second layer, we have a, a two snap that's going to connect. It's going to go from C2 to C3, connecting our three snap wire to our lamp. And then our next two snap is going to go from C5 to C6. It's going to connect our lamp to our battery. And then we're going to connect we're gonna take another two snap and we're gonna connect our three snap to our switch. And then finally, we're going to connect our switch to our battery. So I'm gonna- I love this Dr. Short Circuit. It looks like a rectangle. It does. We just made a big rectangle. We did. And I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to. Okay. Please. One of the things that I also want to let all of our campers know is this is recorded. So you can also go back and watch the recording, which hopefully will be up by morning or before. Okay. So we're gonna give just one more minute. If you don't finish building, that's okay. You can just watch. And we are going to turn on when you're ready. You can turn on your switch and see what happens. Wow, so Dr. Short Circuit turned her switch on our circuit is complete because i can see the lamp is illuminated yes. there's a beautiful white light glowing from our lamp and when Dr. i turn short circuit is there any heat involved with that lamp like if you put your hand by the lamp if i couldn't see the light would i be able to feel it with some heat there is no heat for this lamp. This lamp is very safe. It does not have any heat. However, if you cannot see the light, there are some ways that you can check to see that you are connected. If you make sure that your path is complete all the way around and that there are no gaps, then your light should light up. And also, if you want to 
For our extension activity today, you'll see a circuit exactly like this, but we use a motor that is a lot easier to tell if it's litter, if it's working or not. And we can hear that. So what I'm gonna do real quick, Dr. Short Circuit, because I really loved that advice that you gave to feel around to see if we feel any gaps. So what I did just real quickly is I removed the two snap wire from E2 and E3, just so that okay. I could feel the difference of what a gap feels like. Okay. So now I have my finger on the snap for E2. I'm moving it to the right and it drops down and I can feel the breadboard. And then on the right of that, I can feel the switch. So that's what I'm meaning when I say, can I feel a gap? But when I put that two snap wire back on there and I move it across, there is my, my finger doesn't fall down into the gap. It just moves straight over to the switch. So that's how we can use um, uh, tactily, we can feel to make sure that we don't have any gaps. That is a good point, Dr. Battery. Thanks for pointing that out. So the last thing that I want to show you today before we talk about our extension activity is when you are finished building and you take your snap circuits apart, you want to make sure that you take it apart the same way you put it together. So you take apart layer two first. And then, Dr. Batteries, am I just going to throw everything just anywhere in my kit? Not if I want to play with my snap circuits again yeah. and know where my pieces are. We're going to put everything back exactly where they belong so that we can find them the next time we want to build. It is so much easier to complete tasks if we are organized and it takes us less time to do it because we don't have to spend all of our time searching for the pieces that we need. And we can apply this to snap circuits. We can apply it to school. We can apply it to our bedtime routine. Organization is a very important skill. Yes. So I just disassembled our snap circuits while we were talking and I put everything back where it belongs. And that is our build for today. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Short Circuit. So we have learned, um, we are gonna have the extension activity will be mailed to you. Um, our extension activity is going to be to start by building project number one or project number two. And then you can experiment by moving the parts around into different configurations and take pictures. Leanne, could they send us pictures? They're welcome to, and there'll be information for that in the follow-up email. I love it. And one, uh, this is Dr. Short Circuit, Circuit again. One other thing I would suggest that you do while you're building your, your circuits for your extension activity is learn where all your parts are so that you can find them easily. Excellent, excellent. I hope you guys have had as much fun as we have. And can you believe now is the, like the worst possible time of the day it's the longest possible time before more time with Dr. Short Circuit and Dr. Batteries not included with our Snap Circuit kits. But don't worry, we will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to be learning about open and closed circuits and series and parallel circuits. And we're going to be doing a lot of building tomorrow. Get okay. it? Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us. We're at the top of the hour, and so we must say goodbye. Thank you so much, instructors and students, for joining us, and we will see go, you tomorrow. I, I don't want to go, but thank I... you, captionist. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. I don't want to go, but I'll have to. Bye. Bye. But we Bye. get to see you tomorrow. Bye.